Hi everyone, today is Thursday, March 7th, and we are giving away nine more prizes, including three more of these one gigahertz touchscreen scopes. If you follow us on the Keysight Bench Facebook page, and I know not all of you are on Facebook, which is fine, but if you do, you probably saw the schematic challenge we posted earlier this week, and we have a new one today. These are essentially little engineering problems that test different parts of your double E knowledge. Today's schematic challenge question is this. Given this V in, draw the waveform at V out. You can post your answers on that Facebook post and see how your answer stacks up. There's a link for that in the description. And this is actually an interview question some of our R&D teams use for interviewing new hires. We also have a few more of these coming next week. So if you want more of that, check us out on Facebook. And now it's time for today's tip with Erin. She's looking at the oscilloscope's ADC system. There's a lot of controversy in the industry about like internally between test gear vendors about how to spec ADCs. So Aaron is here to help clear that up for us. The number of ADC bits is easily one of the most talked about specifications these days. Because of this, many engineers tend to rely on this as the sole spec that determines an oscilloscope's quality. However, the reality is the importance of ADC bits is typically exaggerated, while the other critical indications of signal integrity get pushed to the background. The number of ADC bits spec'd on the datasheet and the number of those bits that are actually effective in showing you your measurements on screen are very different. The specification that you should really be looking for is the system's effective number of bits, or system ENOB. The number of ADC bits is very important, but that could be completely irrelevant if the rest of the oscilloscope is not designed properly. So ENOB will give you a better idea as to whether the rest of the oscilloscope will actually give you the performance that you need. This will ultimately determine the quality of measurements that you're able to get from that oscilloscope. If your measurement quality is too poor, you'll continue to collect incorrect data, leading to an unstable and possibly malfunctioning device. This makes system ENOB one of the most important specifications of an oscilloscope. IEEE actually uses system ENOB as a measure of an oscilloscope's overall signal integrity. Also, notice that I keep saying system ENOB, not just ENOB and definitely not ADC ENOB. Since system ENOB is typically not that impressive, there are some vendors that will list ADC ENOB in their data sheet. And some people will just see that term ENOB and take that for face value. However, ADC ENOB just refers to the effective number of bits in the ADC and only the ADC. However, an oscilloscope is made up of a lot more than an ADC. ADC ENOB is not representative of the number of bits that are actually effective in the entire oscilloscope measurement system, which is what really matters when you go to make measurements. The system ENOB is the number of bits that are actually effective in displaying a signal, making measurements on it, and using features to analyze it. When you're evaluating various oscilloscopes based on their data sheets, be sure the ENOB is listed out based on bandwidth. And also make sure that you're looking at the system ENOB rather than ADC ENOB. And if it's not in the data sheet, ask for it. You can learn more about how ADC bits and ENOB will affect your measurements in my new video series that will be starting up next month, Exposing Signal Integrity Myths. So keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, you can download the white paper, Understanding ADC Bits and ENOB, to learn more about this. And now it's time to draw some winners. Every day we're giving away a 1204G, that's a 200 megahertz, 1000 X oscilloscope that we just launched. We're giving away two U1233A handheld digital multimeters, a couple of these probe packs, and a perpetual for all of your life bench view license. Um, and then today as a bonus giveaway, we are giving away a 3, 000, three of these 3000 T-series oscilloscopes. There's a breakdown for all those prizes in the blog post that is linked in the description. And today's winners, we're gonna start with the winner of the 1204G. That winner is Carlo DeSantis. Congratulations, Carlo. The DMMs are gonna to go to Suzuki Eiji and Conrad Kimbrough. Congratulations to Suzuki and Conrad. The Probe 2 packs, these are really cool, 200 megahertz. They're uh, pretty new also. Uh, I mean, the ones you win will obviously be brand new, but um, those are switchable 10 to one, 200 megahertz probes. Those go to Corey Peterson 
and Dabika Ravankar. Congratulations to those winners. The Benchview license goes to Stefan Nuttall. Congratulations, Stefan. And then the three one gigahertz 3000 T series touchscreen oscilloscopes go to Aaron Snyder, Mike Webb, we have another Mike winner, and Daniel Raymond. Congratulations to all of our winners. We'll be in touch with you in the next 72 hours. So check your inbox if we said your name. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and our podcast channel. We're probably gonna do a live stream podcast next week looking at how to use scopes in an RF application. And if you do the Facebook thing, go check out the Facebook bench or the Keysight bench and the Keysight RF Facebook pages. I'm Daniel Bogdanoff and I'll see you tomorrow.